some form of heart action over there. Very faint, very slow. Seems to be coming from about 60 or 70 bodies, as near as I can make out. Alien bodies, Bones. Could be. There are no other signs of breathing or any other form of respiration. Hull's surface is pitted with meteor scars. However, scanners make out a name. SS Botany Bay. When you can check the register. No such vessel listed. Records of that period are fragmentary, however. The mid-1990s was the era of your last so-called world war. The eugenics wars. Of course. Your attempt to improve the race through selective breeding. Oh, now wait a minute. Not our attempt, Mr. Spock. A group of ambitious scientists. I'm sure you're familiar with the type. Devoted to logic, completely unemotional. Doctor, I would be pleased All right, all right. <laughs> As you were. Helm, rig for tractor beam. Lock onto that vessel. Rigging for tractor beam, sir. Bridge is yours, Mr. Spock. Prepare to join the landing party, Doctor. Well, if you're actually giving me a choice, then I'm I... not. <laughs> <laughs> I will need someone familiar with late 20th century Earth. Here's a chance for that historian to do something for a change. What's her name? Um, McGivers. Lieutenant McGivers. <laughs> Alert rescinded decks 5 through 12. Bow crews, phasers, scanners, and deflector units remain at stations. Marla. 
Anson from Physics Lab asked if you were coming to the rec room tonight. Oh. Tell Mr. Afraid to ask me himself that I'll be waiting for a man who'll break down my door and carry me where he wants me. Yes. <laughs> Attention! The following personnel report to transporter room. Engineering Officer Scott, Lieutenant MacGyvers, acknowledge. MacGyvers, on my way. century vessel, old type atomic power, <coughs> bulky, solid. They used to call them transistor units. I'd love to tear this baby apart. Captain, it's a sleeper ship. Suspended animation. I've seen old photographs of this, necessary because of the time involved in space travel until about the year 2016. <laughs> it took years just to travel from one planet to another. Is it possible they're still alive after centuries of travel? It's theoretically possible. I've never heard of it being tested for this long a period. What a handsome group of people. <laughs> Jim, I have a new reading. The lights must have triggered some mechanism. Captain, look here. Scotty? Beats me what's happening. Now we've triggered something, all right. His heartbeat's increasing, now approaching eight beats per minute. There are some signs of respira uh, respiration beginning. This one was probably programmed to be triggered first. Could he be the leader? The leader, Lieutenant. Oh, yes, sir. Um, the leader was often set to revive first. This would allow him to decide whether conditions warranted revival of the others. Heartbeat now approaching 40 beats per minute. The respiration pattern is firming up. From the northern India area, I guess. Probably a Sikh. They were the most <laughs> fantastic warriors. Are we now 52 and increasing? The others. There's no change. And they're all mixed types. Western, mid-European, Latin, African, Asian. A man from the 20th century coming alive. The uh, baby. Heartbeat dropping. Circuit shorting. Probably some dust. Heartbeat now 30, dropping fast. It's a heart flutter, he's dying. Do something, Captain! Can we? It would take an hour to figure it out. What happens if we get him out of there? He'll die in seconds if we don't.
Captain's log, supplemental. Ten hours have elapsed since uh, the discovery of the SS Botany Bay. Attempts to revive other sleepers await our success or failure with the casualty already brought on board. Jack McCoy is frankly amazed at his physical and recuperative powers. As near as I can work out their heading, they must have tried for the Alpha Centauri star system. It makes sense. Closest to Earth, several habitable planets. Their vessel must have gone off course when the port control jets took meteor damage. Other hits deflected them even more off course. Boarding party, this is the Enterprise. Scott here. Scott, any records, logbooks of any kind? Negative, Captain. It appears they were in suspended animation when the ship took off. How many alive? Twelve units have malfunctioned, leaving 72 still in operation. Thirty of those are women. Ship's equipment inventory. Colonization gear, mainly, but quite heavy on the armaments. I suppose that's typical of their era. <laughs> Kirk out. 72 alive. A group of people dating back to the 1990s. The finding of some importance, Mr. Spock. There are a great many unanswered questions about those days. <laughs> a strange, violent period in your history. I find no record whatsoever of an SS Botany Bay. Captain, the DY-100 class vessel was designed for interplanetary travel only. With simple nuclear-powered engines, star travel was considered impractical at that time. It was 10,000 to one against their making it to another star system. And why no record of the trip? Botany Bay. That was the name of a penal colony on the shores of Australia, wasn't it? Well, they took that name for the. If you're suggesting that this was a penal deportation vessel, you've arrived at a totally illogical conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Your Earth was on the verge of the Dark Ages. Whole populations were being bombed out of existence. A group of criminals could have been dealt with far more efficiently than wasting one of their most advanced spaceships. Yes, well, so much for my theory. I'm waiting to hear yours. <laughs> Even a theory requires some facts, Captain. So far I have none. That irritates you, Mr. Spock? Irritation? Yeah. I am not capable of that emotion. <laughs> <laughs> of course. My apologies, Mr. Spock. Do you suspect any danger in this? Insufficient facts always invites danger, Captain. Well, we'd better get some facts. Helm rig for towing. Aye, aye, sir. Make course for Starbase 12. Aye, sir. <laughs> inside this man that refuses to accept death. Look at that. Even as he is now, his heart valve action has twice the power of yours and mine. Lung efficiency is 50% better. An improved breed of human. What the eugenic war was all about. I'd estimate he can lift us both with one arm. It'll be interesting to see if his brain can match his body. Doctor. Will he live? It appears he will, Lieutenant. I'd like to talk to you. If I were to rate your performance today on the landing party, I I'd know, sir. I'm sorry. Lieutenant, at any one time, the safety of this entire vessel might depend entirely upon the performance of a single crewman aboard. The fact that you find a man strangely compelling to you personally is no reason Not to... personally, Captain. 
professionally. My profession is historian, and when I find a specimen from the past alive, I am in the sheer delight of examining his mind. <laughs> and uh, men were more adventuresome then? Bolder, more colorful? Yes, sir. <coughs> I think they were. Good. If I can have honesty, it's easier to overlook mistakes. That's all. Yes, sir. Pity you wasted your life on command, Jim. You'd have made a fair psychologist. Fair? <laughs> Participated in my rebirth in a small 
hallway. I have been reading up on starships, but there is one luxury not mentioned in the manual. I don't understand. A beautiful woman. My name is Khan. Please, sit and entertain me. <laughs> <laughs> on your ship, its purpose, and what... And why do you wear your hair in such an uncomplimentary fashion? <laughs> it's comfortable. But it is not attractive. Fair. Soft. Natural. Simple. Please, remember. Mr. Khan, I'm here on business. You find no pleasure here? My interest is scientific. Men of, that is, the world of the past. I'm sure you understand to act there. Thank you. 
Forgive my curiosity, Mr. Khan, but my officers are anxious to know more about your extraordinary journey. And how you managed to keep it out of the history books. <laughs> Adventure, Captain. Adventure. There was little else left on Earth. There was the war to end tyranny. Many considered that a noble effort. Tyranny, sir? Or an attempt to unify humanity? Unify, sir. Like a team of animals under one whip. I remember something of those years. It was a time of great dreams and great aspirations. Under dozens of petty dictatorships. One man would have ruled eventually. Like Rome, under Caesar. Think of its accomplishments. Then your sympathies were well ah. <laughs> Captain, you are an excellent tactician. You have your second in command attack. While you sit and watch for weakness. You have a tendency to express ideas in military terms, Mr. Khan. This is a social occasion. It is said that social occasions are merely warfare concealed. Many prefer it more open, more honest. You fled. Why? Were you afraid? I have never been afraid. But you left at the very time mankind needed courage. We offered the world order. <laughs> to apologize. They had no right to treat you that way. Quite understandable, since I am something of a mystery to them. You're no mystery to me. I know exactly who you are. Do you? Leif Erikson, Richard the Lionheart, Napoleon. I don't know if you're going to like living in our time. Then I will remold it. Please, don't. Go! Or stay. But do it because it is what you wish to do. Well, I'll stay a little longer. How many minutes do you graciously offer? I only meant that- This grows tired. You must now ask. I'd like to stay, please. Open your heart. Will you open your heart? Yes. I intend to take the ship. Do you agree? <sighs> please don't ask me. I need your help. You won't harm anyone. Now you question me. No. Will you assist me? Oh, please, Khan, don't ask Leave me. Leave me then. Go, I No. No, I promise. I'll do anything you ask. <laughs> Through 
1986, absolute ruler of more than a quarter of your world, from Asia through the Middle East. The last of the tyrants to be overthrown. I must confess, gentlemen, I've always held a sneaking admiration for this one. He was the best of the tyrants and the most dangerous. Men were more adventurous, bolder, certainly more daring. Gentlemen, this romanticism about the ruthless dictator is... Uh, Mr. Spock, we humans have a streak of barbarism in us. Appalling, but there, nevertheless. There were no massacres under his rule. And as little freedom. No wars until he was attacked. Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Spock, you must understand us. We can be against him and admire him all at the same time. <laughs>
sorry, Captain. I was lost in thought. My door locked from outside. A guard posted. Unusual treatment for Khan Noonien Singh. You identified me from your computer system, I imagine. I'd like those answers now. First, the exact uh, reason for your starflight. A new life. A chance to build a world. Other things I doubt you would understand. Why? Because I'm not the product of controlled genetics. Captain, while I am intrigued by your ability, you are, quite honestly, inferior. Mentally, physically, in fact. I am surprised at how little improvement there has been in human evolution. Oh, there have been your technical advancements, but how little man himself has changed. Yes, it appears we will do quite well in your century, Captain. Do you have any other questions? No. They've all been answered. Jim, Captain! Turbo elevators inoperative. Jim, Captain! Atmospheric control, shut off. Useless. They're on override in engineering. Boop. Engineering, this is the bridge. Scotty? Scott here, Captain. I think <laughs> uh... <laughs> What's going on down there? He can't answer you at the moment, Captain. Your ship is mine. I have shut off the life support systems to your bridge and jammed your exit routes. I am willing to negotiate. Flood all decks with neural gas. Impossible. Intruder control systems inoperative. Mr. Khan was very thorough in his study of our tech manuals. Contact Starbase 12. Communications are totally jammed, Captain. We will use every contingency <laughs> anticipated. Your air should be getting quite thin by now, Captain. Do you surrender the bridge? Negative. Academic captain, refuse and every person on the bridge will suffocate. Stardate 31.42.8. That's 
They have my ship. Discarding their own worthless vessel. Only moments of air left on the bridge now. Accommodations recommended for Lieutenant Spinelli, Lieutenant Dehura, and of course, the Spock. I take full responsibility. I take full to watch him very closely. He may decide to cooperate.
life. Now please don't kill him. engineering section. I'll follow in case... Ladies, we must retake the vessel while the anesthesia lasts. Meet me in the armory. I'm blowing the clear first. Clock out. Tame a continent, Mr. Khan. Can you tame a world? 
Have you ever read Milton, Captain? I understand. Lieutenant Marla MacIvers. Given the choice between court martial and accompanying them there, will be difficult. A struggle at first to survive, to, to find food. I'll go with him, sir. A superior woman. I will take her. <laughs> and I've got something else I wanted. A world to win. An empire to build. This hearing is closed. Let's go. It's a shame for a good Scotsman to admit it, but I'm not up on my Milton. <laughs> the statement Lucifer made when he fell into the pit. It is better to rule in hell than to serve in heaven. It would be interesting, Captain, to return to that world in a hundred years and to learn what crop had sprung from the seed you planted today. Yes, Mr. Spock. It would indeed. What? Chop! Quit! Look! <laughs>
Some things, Captain, are beyond even my ability to predict. Well, I do know one thing, Mr. Spock. And that is, whatever the future holds, we will all visit it together. Live long Thank and prosper.